Welcome to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. On today's show, we'll recap another busy weekend for the Ferris State Bulldogs as we check in with Bulldog football, the Ferris State hockey team, and Bulldog volleyball. We'll start first, though, with Bulldog football, joined by head coach Tony Anise. Coach, welcome to the show, and congratulations on the, the round one playoff victory. Thanks, Rob. My pleasure. Took on Washita Baptist out of Arkansas this past weekend, uh, the Great American Conference champion, and certainly was a hard-fought game. Uh, fortunately, your team uh, had the final points in the end uh, to pull out another win. Yeah, you know, it's all about survive and, and advance at this time uh, time of year, and we took that to a whole another level. Um, barely survived it, but uh, you know, it's a big a big win against uh, you know a conference champ, as you said. So, you know, last year in our playoff run, you know, we we beat two uh, conference champs. Um, outside of our league and then we were fortunate enough to beat Grand Valley who was the GLIAC champ and and so um, lost in the semis to the MIAA uh, champ but that's what it takes and uh, this week we play another uh, conference champ and and so uh, most teams pretty pretty well even it's, it's going to be a break here and there and uh, we were fortunate enough to you know make a drive score a touchdown and then hold them at the end and just barely survived it. Before we go to some of the highlights, obviously uh, your team's had a battle through the elements here in the month of October and into November, and certainly rain and, and the wet weather played a factor. Yeah, it does. You know, we, uh, I mean, thinking back to, I guess, going back to the Saginaw game, four out of the last six games we've played are uh, probably in my top ten of worst conditions uh, I've ever coached in, and I've coached in, you know, over 300 games as a, uh, a head coach in both high school and college. So. It's been rough, um, you know, Saturday was kind of a, uh, you know, try to hold on, try to not make mistakes. We had four, four turnovers in the first half. They had their share in the second half. It ended up with both teams having four turnovers, but uh, it certainly was a challenge. As we go to some of the highlights, uh, they got off to a quick start on the opening drive with a, with a long touchdown throw. Yeah, you know, they caught us. Uh, you know, our defense really hasn't given up things of that sort all year, but here they split our, our coverage a little bit and send their tackle right up the chute and excuse me their their tailback right up the chute and uh, end up splitting us for a big uh, big pass play. Come back uh, right down though and uh, had a chance to score here, but uh, first fumble out here uh, just down inside the five yard line. Yeah, you know it's a great spot to be. You know we drove right back 10 15 left and it'd be nice to be 7 7, but it didn't work out that way and and then they hit us again. Um, we were. Changing, uh, changing coverage a little bit, got caught with some confusion, um, held them to a field goal though, and I think the key to the, the game was holding uh, them to field goals. Um, you know, able to do that helped us uh, to, to, keep the, to keep the thing, you know, within our grasp, and that was critical. They jumped out to a 13-0 lead, but uh, your team able to move the ball well on the ground, 291 yards rushing, both uh, Travis Russell and Reggie Bell uh, able to get some yards on the ground. Yeah, I hear that's just a bad call by me. You know, Malik, uh, we thought Malik could run by him, but you just couldn't throw it that far against the wind, and you couldn't grip the ball, and, and they're, they're facing the same challenges, even though that was with the wind, um, throwing an interception there. So it became really challenging to grip the ball and to throw the ball, uh, you know, with the sharpness you need to throw it. Speaking of the defense, uh, they certainly made some plays uh, after that early uh, start by Washington Baptist. Yeah, you know, here we're 13 to nothing. The defense, again, held them to two field goals, uh, which allowed us to kind of be, in, you know, within, uh, you know, a grasp of the distance we need to be able to close the game. Um, here, 13 to six, uh, and then uh, Wyatt's extra point to come to make a 13 to seven halftime. We walked into halftime thinking, goodness, that's. Uh, what a blessing. We've had four turnovers in the first half, and we're only down 13-7. to seven. Had a quick start in the second half. As, uh, you'll make up some of that difference uh, here early in the second half. Yeah, we did. You know, we had a, you know, we, we, we moved, changed the field position there, so we're punting on a short field, and Jordan just scooted one down there low, and, you know, those are hard to field. And the, the, he tried to field it on a couple bounces, and it scooted through his legs, and, and uh, so we got great field position. We ended up with a field goal there to make it 13-10. to 10. And then this a big play right here from Jaleel Kenny on the scoop and score. Yeah, you already saw Jaleel with a pick and now a scoop and score. So uh, he had a big game for us. And obviously that's the first time we go ahead in the, in the game. You can see the rain there and the snow and whatever else it is uh, to start the fourth quarter. But uh, tough conditions uh, to try to come back. They got a field goal to reclaim the lead early in the fourth, but then a, a big drive here, uh, 75 yards to get the go-ahead score. Yeah, great drive, a mix between Reggie and Travis. and. Uh, and uh, able to make some plays. Uh, Malik made a couple plays there. And then uh, here, here Robert Thomas is a great block on their Mike linebacker and Travis splits him and uh, 
we score to go ahead, uh, and that's the final. Certainly uh, had to get a, a couple more stops defensively, though, and Tavier Thomas with the, the final interception here. Yeah, you know, we moved him back. Uh, you know, we missed missed on a third and short play. Um, Travis didn't get us the first down. He's close, and so we punted on fourth down, and, and Jackson did a great job punting it down to the five, and we kept him down there and, and for the final victory. 24-19, the final score. Now you move on to take on the number one seed in Super Region 3, Fort Hayes State, uh, out in Hayes, Kansas, and a, a long road trip here for the second round. Yeah, you know, we're looking forward to it. Um, I know this seems odd, but uh, Thanksgiving's kind of a different deal when it comes to having a game at home. Um, and it's, it's, it's just, uh, you know, our, our true freshmen who normally are our scout guys, you know, they want to go home to family and stuff like that. So this gives us a chance to, to on Thanksgiving, not be home. Um, and, um, you know, it's the first time we've played uh, three home games here the last three years. And so it'll be cool for us to be on the road. And uh, I think it's going to be a little bit warmer in Hayes, Kansas than it is here in Big Rapids, Michigan. And we're looking forward to that and playing a great opponent, you know, to win the MIAA the, the way they want it and to be undefeated. They earned the number one seed and, uh, you know, they're a great team and we've obviously got uh, some challenges ahead of us, but we look forward to those challenges. What does it mean uh, here to be playing on Thanksgiving weekend? And obviously the fourth year in a row your team's been able to do that. Well, you know, my mom's 83 and she's so conflicted by it. You know, she was at the game the other day, said, uh, boy, Tony, I just wish you could come for Thanksgiving. I said, well, mom, you're at the game. Are you rooting for us or against <laughs> us? You know, but uh, it's pretty cool to be able to, uh, you know, play. Um, our kids have really embraced the opportunity to play, um, you know, the last week of November and during Thanksgiving for, for um, you know, years in a row, you know, four years in a row. Um, we've had 10, 10 wins in a season, which uh, I think is, you know, the first time in Ferris State history that's happened. And, and so um, that's all great. You know, I mentioned that yesterday in our team meeting that uh, there's guys that have just been part of, uh, you know, just unbelievable achievements here. Uh, you know, that's kind of the watermark. Uh, you know, if you win 10 wins in a season, it's an incredible year, and even in Division One and and we've done that four years in a row, so it's pretty incredible. What does it take uh, here with that playoff experience that uh, you've been able to develop to go out to Hayes, Kansas, and, and come back with a victory? You know, I think we'll be, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be the team that uh, keeps our composure, that uh, is comfortable traveling. Um, we'll give our best shot out there. Um, I think we'll play well. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, we were playing a great opponent, just like last week. You know, uh, that team was a, a great opponent, and so. You're playing championship teams, so they expect to win as much as uh, we expect to win. And, and so it's going to be, uh, if you see the regional scores last week in our region, we had the biggest, you know, uh, win as far as uh, point differential. And so they're tight games. Um, they come down to the wire, and we're just going to have to win games like that. Well, Coach, congratulations again on the win. Best of luck here as you take on the Fort Hay State Tigers this Thanks, weekend. Thanks, Rob. And congratulations to volleyball again. I don't know. Uh, they're a machine, and so uh, another Kuyak championship. Proud of what they've done as well. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.